maybe necessarily don't want to have a kid, but you have been on birth control for 10 years and you can tell it's affected your body over the last 10 years. And it's like, how do you get out of it? You know, you are uniquely designed and uniquely placed. Mm -hmm. And I think that the minute we can start to shift and realize like our experiences are unique and there can serve then a purpose. So there's like a lot of silent work that isn't, you know, necessarily posted about on Instagram, you know, like yeah, successes and stuff. But something that is posted on Instagram is that. Welcome to Under the Sun Podcast. I'm Ilea. And I'm Emily. Grab a cup of coffee and join us every other Wednesday as we discuss all things holistic health, faith, relationships, going against the grain, and really everything under the sun. Let's get started and thanks for being here. We need to um, call out the elephant in the room that this is season two of Under the Sun Podcast. Round of applause. Everybody that nobody's in the audience, we're just <laughs> alone in our in my basement. But also, we have a dedicated room now. This is true. Yes. Yeah. So we had a little decorating party um, a couple weeks ago where Emily and her husband came over. And then I was obviously here because I live here. And my husband, we kind of made up this room. Um, let's call out the second elephant in the room is that like you can tell on screen <laughs> that, the, <laughs> that the lines on the wall progressively go down this direction <laughs> if you're listening on a podcast we have like you know those like pinterest lines like the three lines they're really cute and aesthetic and they're adorable i love them and like they were emily's <laughs> idea and then i executed but i executed it in a very slanted way so um they kind of just you know, I recommend if you're just listening on the podcast, go just, <laughs> maybe we'll post it on Instagram of like, Leah should have used a ruler. She should have thought ahead, but. Which is great. Cause I honestly, if you wouldn't have said that, that would have never caught my eye. Well, and you can't really tell when you're here in person. You can, okay. if you look hard, but on, on camera, camera, because the table is straight, that is straight. You, <laughs> you, you can, can just see, see it like just, sl- just slowly going. Yeah. So our house is uneven and we'll just say it's that and not my yeah. lack of measuring skills and like, and we were talking and we, I don't yeah. know, we were distracted. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to do like a half sun, but this is like, it needed more pattern. And so anyways, mm-hmm. we like it. Yeah. And then Emily painted that uh, bookshelf. It used to be bright red. It was in this basement when we moved in. So it's great. Yeah. I thought you were going to say the elephant in the room was like, we're not drinking coffee. Oh, which is oh. also really sad. Do you want to, <laughs> do you want to, Say why we're not drinking coffee. And I guess like, yeah. let's update. Like it's been a minute and what coffee do we drink and why yeah. are we not drinking it? And why we are we so <laughs> mad about it? <laughs> we like our coffee. Uh, <laughs> Otherwise we just drink water. Which seriously, <laughs> <laughs> this is water. I have to drink water all day. I don't want to like, I'm, I wanted yeah. to have tea. I'm, I'm out. It's, it's a yeah. whole thing. I'm out of water. I'm out of coffee. It's, yeah. Hopefully this would be the only time we're doing this yeah. and not drinking coffee. Yeah. Seriously. And we want to get like, either, either we need to find like an Instagram account where someone makes like custom mugs Yeah. and then like figure out something with them or like we'll have a custom under the sun mug. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We but need mugs. soon we'll have like a custom mug that like in a shop that people can buy under the sun merch and swag. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it's like the, what's the like morning show? They yeah. Have their coffee with their logo. It just needs to be a thing. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. But the, do you want to say why? Like, so the King coffee yeah. that we order. Yeah. So I mean, well, you sell probably go into a lot of detail in King coffee, but the premise what? is yeah. that, you know, coffee in general is not great for our bodies. It's not supportive. But the beauty of King Coffee is the coffee itself is organic and super um, clean of any toxins and and things like that. But then it also has a therapeutic dose of reishi mushroom in it, which um, is kind of the king of all medicinal mushrooms. So you think of all the adaptogens and blood sugar and all the things. So traditional coffee would make me do this, even if it was decaf, even if it was organic, um, just because of the way it just modulated and just like amplified when I was, especially when I was sick, just amplified at all those illnesses. 
versus, you know, this King Coffee. I mean, I could drink like seven a day and I'm super hydrated. And your husband does. And he does. <laughs> but it like just, I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever felt jittery from King. No. I remember you dropped over a packet and I didn't know it was an instant coffee, which is like old me. Very pretentious coffee snob. Like, co- I say coffee snob, but I really didn't know anything about it. I just wanted Starbucks. You gave me a packet, and I put it through the espresso maker. Like, I I put it in the thing and, like, ran it through because I, I, I didn't. That. Yeah. Well, because I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't think about it. Right. But, like, once I started drinking it, I was like, oh, it's fine. But, you know, like, we did a box. So we'll just go back to regular coffee. The taste of regular coffee tasted so acidic to me. And it still does. Like, we're currently yes. out of coffee. and. Because of supply chain <laughs> stuff. Because yeah, everything's stuck in the ocean. Yeah, everything's stuck in the ocean, and I'm not okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, a little bit. Apparently, we just need to start our own company with, like, raging mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, apparently. We'll just grow mushrooms yeah. in the basement, and <laughs> it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. And okay. the difference is the way it's patented yeah. within this company. They're the only company who creates the, can, you know, get the spores out of the mushroom, which is super, super powerful. So yeah, it's great. They help you. And we're sad. Yeah. And it, we're cold and wanting our coffee. When, when we were doing, um, like when I was, or this is a tangent, but when we were doing like the parasite all stuff yeah. and I was like, I'd get a headache and I'd know like there'd be a parasite coming out soon. Cause I kind of just figured out the cycle of it. Mm-hmm. I'd have a cup of King coffee. Like even if it was like 10 o'clock at night and then I'd go to sleep and then wake up and then the next day, like pass parasite. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Poop, parasite. There it is. Coffee. Yeah. Done. <laughs> but that, that being said, we need t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Why don't we have poop t-shirts? Oh, we no. should have. That's what I was going to get was a poop pillow. Oh yes. Or a poop. Yeah. So we, we haven't pillow. like fully direct directed. We haven't fully decorated, um, some people are probably watching on you on YouTube and they get what we're talking about. Some people are listening and don't get it, but we have a shelf behind us. We have big visions <laughs> and it's decor. And we need to decorate it. So we need a bo- couple boxes of King, a couple like staple books that, you know, we love yeah. and then a poop emoji yeah. somewhere. Okay. So we talk about poop. Poop is important. It is important. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So off that tangent. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. Season two of Under the Sun. Oh. I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. I missed you. I missed, I missed you. podcasting. I know. I feel like we like blinked and it's been months. It's like, been I months. I don't know what, I know what happened, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. So do you want to like take us back to the last episode we released and kind of pick up where we left off just like as a personal update we're just gonna yeah like kind of start off the season with what we've been up to um what life changes have happened and then yeah yeah, yeah. take it away Emily. oh boy okay so um huge I mean I don't know if career change would be the right I mean it's not really a career change it's a job description change um so I think when we left off first of all we talked about the mighty warriors kids oh yeah program and um I think after that podcast, it was just, there was a lot of prayer around the fact that it felt like the program went to sleep was the best way I can describe it. I didn't have fear around it. I wasn't like anxious around it. Like I just was, I don't know. It just was like there. And I was like, I guess I'll just launch this. Like, I I don't know. It felt like something was missing, but I couldn't put my finger on what was missing. Um, and it was still like, I felt like when I prayed about it, it was like, no, like this is a thing I have to do this, but I don't know, you know, what's missing. I wasn't sure what piece was missing. And so went to, um, was invited to this, what do we call it? It's not really a conference. <laughs> it was just, um, a group of women that were mm-hmm. all getting together to meet. And, um, some of us knew each other, some of us did it, but just kind of, it's kind of through like social media and you're all practitioners, right? Yeah. 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 So that's like the common denominator of. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Like, like-minded, like-minded women getting together to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone just, you know, was Jesus loving practitioners of like, how do we make sure this, our practices are just being filtered around the Lord and everything. And so we anyway, walked away from that. Um, and God just moved in such a huge way that was like, had an opportunity to take that exact program that I was doing and partner with 
two other women who had already created an adult version of, you know, kind of root cause um, practice and joining in community. And they were like, we really want you to bring this and do the kids version. And I was like, oh, that's the end. And it was like, it woke up, right? And called John and I was like, what do you think? He's like, you've been praying about this. And like, this is the first time we feel like we've had any answer to it. So like, let's keep praying about it. But yes, like, I think that's, you know, totally an answer to prayer. So anyway, end up coming home and some things, you know, shifted in the office that I was working with, um, in the best way. Again, God just laid on different people's hearts and they just spoke into that and, um, was able to leave the office to take my practice completely virtual, um, in November, which was huge for my family. I don't think I realized how big of a deal it was going to be. Um, time wise, time or, wise and just support wise. And just, there's just so much, you know, cause um, you were out of the office probably what 30 hours a week or out of the home home. Out of yeah. Home. Yeah. Yeah. It was about 30 hours and it was just a lot of like, I would just come home and I was so exhausted. Like I can't explain it. And I know it wasn't the office. I also know that God has just done a huge work over the last year in my heart, but especially like just preparing me to, be home all the time and just, you know, things that he, so I, I know that even if I'd stayed there, I wouldn't be as exhausted as I was before mm-hmm. because like just the work he was doing and is doing has just shifted and just made me, um, more joyful and just realized so many of just the roots that went beyond my physical health, but just on that spiritual soul, heart, mind, you know, kind of level. And just as he's uprooted those, like I'm just, a more free person, but taking that person and also like taking me back home where like, there's not such an angst of like, we got to hurry, hurry, hurry because Mm. mom has to shower and I have to be perfect and I have to get ready and I have to go to this and I have to be presentable. And you know, there's just, I have so much more freedom. If we need a day, I can just go online, book off or ask some people to move and I can shift things around. If Mm -hmm. the kids need like, oh, to go to the eye doctor or whatever, like I can take a whole day off and I don't have to, you know, like I don't, I don't have a boss. I'm my boss now Yeah, for the most part. And, um, I just, that control is so amazing. Yeah. And so just the opportunity to just like be home and like. Be able but also to really still do what you love. Absolutely. Yeah. To be able to serve my kids in a different way, to be able to like sit there with them, r- respond to an email, respond to Instagram, and then help like pause that for a second, help with the math problem, come back. You know, it's easy to be like, Hey, I got a consult. I'm going to run upstairs 30 minutes of, you know, prep and pray prayer over the consult, do the consult, come down, do a load of laundry, help with math. I got another one. So go back up. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it just, um, I'm just amazed at how much is life I think it brought back and just my kids being like, Oh, mom's home. And there's just security there. Are they happy? Also. Are they excited about it? Yeah. Yeah. I think, and they've been so great and respectful of like, Hey, mom has four hours of consults. I need you to be quiet. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they get a little rowdy or wild or sometimes they'll walk in. Um, but probably one of my best moments was a little girl who typically has consults with me while she, her mom does while she's at school she really like wanted to meet me and she had a whole, she's like nine, had a whole list of questions that she needed to ask me. Mm -hmm. And so we just, you know, again, because I have the flexibility to be like, Hey, like we're not going to charge for this, but like, give me a call on her Christmas break and we're going to sit and we're going to go through all of our questions real quick. So we're sitting there talking and, and Kate walks in and I was like, you know, Kate, come here. And so Kate comes over and says, hi. And they're talking a little bit. They're both nine. And so anyway, then Kate goes away and mom messages me later. She's like, you have no idea. Like it made you seem like a real person to her yeah. because your daughter just came in and like talked to her. And, and she had a question about not feeling maybe ostracized at school for what she was eating. And, mm-hmm. and then Kate, I was like, well, Kate, what do you think? You know, so Kate threw that in there. And so just the idea that I feel like we our sh- our heart is that our family would be a family team. And we talk a lot about that with our kids and each other. And what does that look like to really support each other as a team and not be individualized? But me going to work in an office where they couldn't see what I did was me being individualized, Mm. where now it's like they get to be a part of it. So they get to help. They get to say, like, they each have wanted to pick one night a week that they do dinner. Mm. And so they do dinner on, you know, these two nights. And 
that's them helping out the business. Yeah. And so I feel like that has, all of that has just been really helpful. Um, and the other thing is I get to primarily work with kids. Um, I still work with some adults, but primarily I'm only working with kids. So it also has just expanded my knowledge and really challenged me because I'm working with people from all over the United States. And so it looks very different. It looks different based on family and you forget sometimes how much culture Mm. goes into different parts of the United States. Oh yeah. You have like, you know, Maine is a very different culture than, you know, Southern California. Like they're just very different cultures. And Mm. then you have location. So then it's also in, from a practitioner sense, like what is going on in that location environmentally, because it's different, you know, forest fires and things like that looks different than somebody over here, you know, who has just had, you know, massive tornado and now all of these factories, you know, all the Mm. exposure. And so, I mean, it's just, it's, it's different, um, which is great. It's so challenging, but I think because it's so much more pediatric focused, I just get to have the opportunity to start to see even more patterns, regardless of where they're at. Kids are still kids and just seeing these patterns and seeing, you know, diving into more research around certain things. So that part is also super exciting. Yeah. So I guess for people listening, just to kind of bridge the gap, you're, you're working with kids. Is it like a, they, uh, they can apply to be a part of a program. Is there a C like, tell us yeah. like, so there's two options. The okay. option would be, um, our RCF kids, which was root kind cause of, formula, yes, which thank is you. the company. Thanks. This is why I need her. Cause I'm like, Oh, we all know this, right? No, we don't know. Uh, see, that's what my job <laughs> is though. Like <clears throat> I'm nerdy in the sense of like, I like to research stuff, but like I'm still the layman person in the holistic world. So like you can, you can say some kind of acronym. If I know it, I'll be like, here's the acronym. This is what this means. But if I don't know it, then I'm like, wait, bring me along. What's going on? <laughs> Tell me what that means. Reverse, but, reverse. but RCF I know because I follow RCF on, or like I follow root cause formula on Instagram. So okay. perfect. Thank you. Anyways, continue. Yes. Sorry. So that is really, um, for two, serves two purposes. The first purpose is sometimes in consults, um, one-on-ones when you're just in a one-on-one practice, there's things that you're just repeating over and over and over again. Um, and sometimes in a quick consult, it's just not what takes precedent, Mm -hmm. you know? So if the child is really having a hard time sleeping, that's going to be our focus. If, if that is truly what is kind of at the top of, of that, that list. So if we think of our kids coming into the world, sitting on a pile of tax, my job is to figure out what tax are the biggest so we can remove them. Mm. That means education and supplements and, you know, diet restrictions and all that, um, or diet education, um, nutrition education around whatever the biggest tax are that we need to remove. Because in theory, if I can remove the biggest ones and educate the parents, then the parents get to take off the small ones and, yeah. it, and you don't need me forever. Like that's not, I don't think I've done that's my job. Yeah. yeah. I think I've done my job if we can work through the big layers and then parents get to, um, be able to be empowered to do the rest. So the idea of the group program was come in with every bit of knowledge that I would ever give to every parent if I possibly could. And then we still have one-on-one consults. We still work on coming in as that practitioner and pulling off the big tax. But the idea is that then you have 12 weeks of, you get more FaceTime because you get Zoom calls with community. So you're building community. You're saying like, hey, my child has to go egg-free. Give me all of your egg-free you yeah. know, options. And then you have a whole, <laughs> like almost like a Facebook thread yeah. um, within that group where you just get to go in and like, you know, ask those questions. Um, so you get community, then you get just modules and information of like, Hey, oxalates may not be an issue now, but at some point, if someone tells you that your child has an oxalate issue, here's all the foods that, you know, you Mm -hmm. now have in your toolbox that you can always refer back to. So like that program is for building great knowledge as well as, um, I have to plug in my laptop. Oh no. Okay. No. So just stop Keep, for a second. Pause. So like the idea of oxalates, um, through the program, then you get, you know, maybe your child doesn't have an oxalate issue now, but at some point down the road, maybe something comes up where you need to go on a low oxalate diet. Well now, because you've gone through the program, you have 
hopefully all of this information in your back pocket that you can just kind of pull it up and, you know, go back to it. So that is the beauty of the program. Then the other option is I still do one-on-ones. So that's just for the parents who are like, Hey, I just need help. I don't really want to go through the program. I either don't have time. Um, or I just, it doesn't seem like it would serve me. Um, I don't, I have great community or I don't really, again, have time to dive sure. into all of that information. And some parents are so overwhelmed, um, that really does not serve their family well in the long run. If Mm -hmm. mom and dad are overwhelmed with the process, then that, you know, child feels that overwhelm and, and then stress just gets piled on more stress and more Mm -hmm. stress. And now all of a sudden I can't do this and I spend all this money and Mm -hmm. so instead sometimes one-on-ones then are the best way for people. Like for the parents. Yeah. 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 It's like, we don't need all the education around it. You just need what you need in this moment. Don't worry about being overwhelmed. yeah. Individualized, like yeah. instead of general knowledge, um, through a group. But I have to ask for everyone listening, what is oxalates? Like what is What's just a you, yeah. yeah. What so, is the quick like synopsis of what does that mean? Mm-hmm. So certain foods, even if they're really, really healthy, have certain compounds that depending on the body and the gut and the overall, um, terrain of the system. If your body cannot break down certain compounds, oxalates being one of them, then that actually creates a lot of issues. So oxalates than kidney stones, that's the body's ability, lack of ability to break down those. And then they're stored. And that's often where people get kidney stones. Okay. I was just clearing it up. (laughs) (laughs) So there's the group where it's like general information, kind of the starter Is it kind of the starter of, um, like care, like information? So a lot of, lot of data, lots of stuff like education purposes. And then the one-on-one it's more like individualized care for like the kid or the parent, like family unit. Am I getting that right? Yeah. Yeah. There's some wiggle room in there for sure. For sure. But just, yeah. Do you want to have vast knowledge and really be empowered yeah. And have community. Because sometimes people are just like, tell me what to take because I don't want to. <laughs> some people yeah. are like, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. I Versus... like to know the information, but like some people just like to be like, no, just tell me what to take. Make, help me feel better. And that'll be great. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And some people don't need the community or they're so busy. They can't enter into that. In which case, you know, doesn't really serve them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I feel like that is still, I mean, that's, so now I just get to be this whole brand new, like build your business in a different way. Cause before it was yeah. just whatever came my way. Now it's like, Oh, I can actually like build this in the, the way I want it to be built or the way it served my family best. So yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. kind of like you, you have like a different example to show people too. Cause you're, you're homeschooling your kids too. Yeah. And that's a whole thing to tackle in itself. So you can go into these consults and be like, Hey, I know it's tough. I'm homeschooling my kids while also working full-time from home. Like I get it. Like you can, you have like a place of, which working full-time outside the office is also difficult, but it has different challenges, but you've seen it now both ways. Mm -hmm. Like where you can, you just come to the table with a lot of probably great information for even moms. Yeah. So I mean, obviously for moms, but (laughs) yeah, Yeah. I think there's um, a pastor that always says, you know, you are uniquely designed and uniquely placed and I think that the minute we can start to shift and realize like our experiences are unique and there can serve then a purpose mm. as to why my experiences are what they are and that should be able to serve other people. Yeah. Yeah. So how about you? Let's give, let's hear your update. Oh, loads of things. <laughs> All the things. Well, it's been like what? Has it been full six months? Yeah, it has. It wow. has. It, Weird. Yeah, it's been six months since our last episode. So a lot of, <laughs> a lot of things, a lot has changed for me, and and not a lot has changed all at the same time. Um, I feel like, have I told you this before? I mean, I haven't told the people on the podcast, but like, I feel like God is in the tilling phase of life, where it's like turning up, like bringing up new soil, and like getting rid of stagnant soil as, as yeah. I have a garden one year and I'm like the soil, <laughs> but like tilling up soil in a good way and also a way that is difficult. Um, and like Dave and I are both kind of in the season of like 
there's something uh, like there's like a calling on our family. We're just in the building phase of it. So there's like a lot of silent work that isn't, you know, necessarily posted about on Instagram, you know, like yeah, successes and stuff. But something that is posted on Instagram is that we're having a baby. Yay. Yay. Talk about building. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally, gutturally. <laughs> the family is building. Yes. I am. Uh, so right around the time Emily was like, she, you went to a, uh, that women's, I'll just say women's retreat. I don't know what it was there called. There you go. Perfect. Retreat. Women's I don't retreat. know why my brain wants to say conference. It wasn't a conference. <laughs> well, cause you retreat also. Retreat is great. You also had a com you, two conferences. Yeah, you went true. to Idaho and you, didn't you go to, you to Alabama In Alabama? Mm-hmm. So like there was like a phase where we we're like, Oh, we know we're going to take like a little hiatus right here. Cause like we, you know, yeah. we're just both busy. Well, in that time as well, I got pregnant intentionally. Like we, we were trying for a baby and we can go into that into our future series. We can talk about that in a second, but, um, I got morning sickness pretty bad from, I mean, exactly like six, the, the six week mark, like, oh, you're six weeks today and you're on the couch level <laughs> until 10 weeks. Um, which if you're listening and you've had morning sickness, everyone I say that to, they're like, oh, it was only four weeks. And I'm like, yeah, but like a really hard four weeks. Was, it's uncomfortable. Like it was, a, it was a month and, um, I was like leveled on the couch and uh, couldn't even like watch TV or scroll on my phone. Cause I was nauseous. Like, but it was like vertigo, like the room was spinning and I couldn't do anything without like wanting to vomit. So good times. We talk about vomit and poop on this, on this podcast a lot. Everything. Um, but yeah, at this moment, as we're recording, um, I'm 24 weeks pregnant. Um, and we're having a little girl, which we're really excited about. We actually, I won't share it, but we, we picked the first name. So that's exciting. I mean, we might see her and be like, it. no, well, no one will know it. No one. I, the only person who knows it is I, is my, uh, sister-in-law and brother. And like, because yes. they had two kids and they shared their name. Like, it's just like a, yeah. it's a, yeah, you have a very close relationship. Yeah. And Irene and, will be there when she's born. Mm-hmm. And so like, we just have a close. Yeah. Anyways. So, um, it's too hard to not tell somebody. Well, yeah. You yeah. Tell somebody. Yeah. Well, and she like, it was nice. Like it was like. It's like, hey, you don't have to tell me when she was like having kids. I was like, you don't have to tell me. She's like, I was like, please keep it secret because they were very like vocal about like, oh no, we're not sharing it because mm-hmm. you know outside com- outside commentary isn't fun. Yeah. Um, you already get that so much with pregnancy. What oh, is that? Holy <laughs> moly! We have to have like a whole podcast of like things to not say to pregnant women. Like <laughs> what? What? We need like a whole panel of women who are like seriously, yeah. Who are like, mm-hmm. so like, I think there's already just so much commentary with being pregnant of like, oh wow, you're big, or oh <laughs> wow, you're small. It's like, how about you shut up? Like, you're not pregnant and you're big. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, or you're a dude. Like, <laughs> what does that serve? I don't, no, I don't what know. What does it like? It's very interesting. Like the commentary people think, or anyways, it doesn't matter. That was a tangent, but like. <laughs> The amount of like traumatic birth stories that people just like, oh, you're pregnant. This is what happened to me. And I'm like, oh, get out of here. What are you doing? What are you doing? Anyways, it also has changed the way I communicate with pregnant women too. But anyways, we're excited. Um, we've named her. We, I mean, we need to see her to make sure she's the name that we like. But so that's a thing. Um, she'll be here late May, early June. Um, and then also, I don't know if we ever talked about it on the podcast, but our husbands are actually starting a business together. I think technically we're owners in it too, but we don't do anything with it. Like we're just, <laughs> I mean, what's theirs is ours, right? Right. So. <laughs> like we're, right. Um, I have like a graphic design background a little. And so like, I'm kind of like weighing in a little bit here and there of like, Hey, maybe let's not use that font or something, <laughs> you know, like that. But like they've, they've started a business, um, called Moyle Outfitters and it's, going to be awesome. Um, and then in 2022, which I always want to say 2020, like why, yeah, why, like, why am I why locked did, in that year? Yeah. The world kind of stopped in 20 and it's just like 2020. Like, I don't know. Like it just it rolls off the tongue. Yeah. yeah better. But, um, 2022 feels like starting, <laughs> starting in March as well. Like this is posted in March, but starting in March as well. Um, I'm going to be posting once a week to my YouTube channel because I, that's like 
Yeah. Where I get my joy of editing. So just a reminder to everybody of like, that's my full-time job is like content creation for a company. And, um, but I like my passion is like, not passion, I shouldn't say, but like my, like, I love creating our own content and then like looking back, you know, a couple years later and being like, oh, we were so young or so goofy or, you know, cause like I, I just forget seasons of life and I take things for granted. So anyways, starting that back so up because fun. I just, I really want to be, um, like even through this podcast and through YouTube, I want to be like the big sister that maybe like girls don't have. Cause I have found through my like holistic fertility. I get so winded <laughs> so easily. <laughs> if people Take could tell I was pregnant before then, I'd be like, no, like it's just, I, I stand up and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> gosh, <clears throat> anyways, um, like through, uh, working with you and getting my like, ho- like hormones, liver, parasites, everything in order, um, to the best that you can, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and, you know, getting off birth control years ago and all, all sorts of stuff. Like it's been a long journey of, you know, learning how to track my fertility in a way to prevent pregnancy. And then, and then when we decided to get pregnant to flip it to where, um, we would have the best chances of getting pregnant right away, which maybe we'll do, we'll do a podcast about that for sure. But, um, I just want to be like the big sister and like teach, like my little sisters, little, my friends, like younger girls that, Hey, just cause like everybody else is doing something this certain way. doesn't mean that that's how you have to do it. Like I was like 19 and what, like, I didn't have friends who weren't on birth control. Like mm-hmm. I didn't have friends who were doing anything naturally cause they were just terrified and petrified that every time they had sex, they would get pregnant. Like there's just no knowledge out there of like, like I really thought for a long time, like I could get pregnant any day of the week, like any day. And that's just not the truth. And, um, I just want to share information of like, whether it be about, you know, natural birth control, makeup, skincare, daily life stuff, just like typical vlogger stuff. But that, that like that and this podcast, like make me like excited and the baby, of course, (laughs) I love her. I'm super excited about her, but (laughs) like, it makes me like excited for content creation again. Cause you know, it's been winter where we live. We live in the Midwest and it's been winter since like, what, when did it start? Really any, anytime it gets below 60, that's when I consider winter. (laughs) Just kidding. Well, I mean, kind of, I'm from Florida. Below 60 is not acceptable. (laughs) (laughs) Like it was like 30 yesterday and like no, no one in my family wore a coat to church because we're like, his 30s, like a heat wave guys, we feel great. (laughs) And Leah's like 60, 59 winter (laughs) listen but there's a difference between like when you're going into fall true when it's like 60 people are wearing freaking full winter coats and then when you're coming out of winter and it's been like negative you know 10 wind chill when on a 20 degree day you're like oh this is fine like it's not a big deal but going into but going into winter it's more of like it's not even the cold I mean it's the cold but it's the short days for me yeah um I just get like it never fails I always get in the rut in winter and just learning how to, yeah. <laughs> if we continue to live in Illinois, um, try, I need to figure out a way to better manage, but, um, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm excited about our ventures and yeah, really like yeah. making an impact. I feel like for women, especially mm-hmm. and yeah, you probably with kiddos and stuff. So, yeah, I think that's cool. Cause I feel like to some degree we could both say, right. That like, this is 2022 is like building year. Oh yeah. Like it, it, yeah. it is that for sure. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. Building businesses. Um, for me, it's like also building habits. Like mm-hmm. I'm yeah. not a good habits. I have not in the past been good with habits. Like I, I'll start something for like a week or two weeks and then it goes away. Except and for so, king coffee. Except <laughs> for king coffee. I like my That's habit. That's the only king. habit I am consistent. <laughs> or is it an addiction? I don't know. Um, have it. If it makes you feel good and it's, and it's good for you. Yeah. It's totally a habit. Um, and like the thing is, is like what I notice. So here's what I, here's what I notice. I've drank coffee my whole pregnancy. I did not, I did not not drink coffee in the first trimester. Like a lot of people for some reason like, Oh no coffee in the first trimester. I'm like, no, that's actually the only thing that sounds good. Like when I'm like, there are a couple days 
during this, you know, morning, morning sickness, it was all day. Like, that's a lie. Like mm-hmm. that's a freaking lie. Um, but that there were some days that only like a latte sounded good mm-hmm. or like only a king coffee. And then that's the, the only thing I consumed that day or like mm-hmm. that, that sounded good. Um, but now like with being out of coffee and having to drink regular coffee before, like she, she always consistently So you moved. only drink king coffee only during, during pregnancy. Coffee. Yeah. But yeah. But during, like, since I'm out, I'll have, like, now one cup, whereas before I'd have, like, two or three cups a day. Yeah. But, like, now with being out and just having to make, like, an espresso, like, I, I have a cup of coffee, and within, like, 10 minutes, she's like, do, 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 do. And I'm like, and I'm like, I, now I feel bad. But, like, with, 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 with King Coffee, she would never, like, she wouldn't lose react. her mind like that. Yeah. Like, but yeah. with, right, I'm like, okay, what does that mean that she's, like, she gets, all over. Yeah, like mm-hmm. the caffeine's really hitting her. So I just have one cup now a day and my life sucks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's great. So I Leah for, you know, your baby shower. We're just all gonna give you boxes of king. Yeah. I mean Bring on the king. <laughs> well, I was planning like have you heard like a postpartum kit that you keep next to your bed and stuff yeah. like a a little like toolkit of like, you know drinks you like and whatever and I'm like okay like I'll just put like a box of king and I'll have Dave bring me water and it'll like it'll be great and I'll just have this all right here with like diapers and you know diapers for her diapers for me diapers for everybody (laughs) so yeah but so that's kind of like what we've been up to so fun fact we actually recorded this podcast already um I was kind of out of the swing of things and a little sleepy because sometimes it just hits you and you get sleepy when you're pregnant. Um, <laughs> did you have that when you were, I mean, I did you have exhaustion? Um, yeah, for sure. Okay. I was like, we're just saying pregnancy. Well, gonna... I mean, in general, it, yes. but like, but yes, pregnancy. It, has, it hits me more, more aggressively mm. than I ever expected yeah. of like, I'll be like, just fine. And then I'm like, Oh, it's 4.30 and I'm asleep on the couch. Like, how did I even get here? I don't remember walking to the couch. Like, <laughs> But um, we recorded this already. So what else? I can't remember. What else did we talk about? I think that was pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we just... Oh, I know. Sorry. Did Go I scare it. you? No. I just, you got really... We need to talk about... <laughs> I it. We need to talk about what's to come. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're good. All right. You're good. We got this. You want to take it away? No, you go ahead. I've been yammering for a while. No, we can. You're good. Yeah. So, um, when we start talking about season two and what did we want to talk about? And so put a few polls on Instagram and different things and just tried to get an idea of what are, what is Ilea super passionate about? What am mm-hmm. I super passionate about? What are we again with the idea of, um, we are, you know, planted for a purpose. Like we have these experiences for purpose. So what, is, what does that look like? And so as we were, you know, kind of discussing it and talking about it and, um, one of our goals for this podcast season two is to really be better about content creation and, um, you know, diving into, so we wanted to kind of theme it. And so we got really excited cause we're like, Oh, let's, cause a lot of people had questions about, um, preconception yeah. And pregnancy. And Ilea was like spouting out stuff about like Pitocin during birth. And all of a sudden I'm like, huh, I've never really, I don't know if I've ever looked into that. And I feel like every single consult I had this week, I'm like, oh, yep, they had Pitocin. <laughs> okay. I need to like understand this more. So as we were talking about like her excitement and her passion and her just like, oh my goodness, I know all the holistic, <laughs> crunchy things about pregnancy and about birth. birth. Yeah, specifically. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I like how when you imitate me, your, your hands get big, you get like intense. And I'm like, dang it, I just need to No, I out. think it's great. But oh, like okay. that, like that passion, like the yeah. passion comes up and you're like, okay, like she's so excited about this topic. Um, and so then to pair that with what I'm super passionate about is just kid health and, you know, family health and all that stuff. So we're going to kind of start with um, women's health yeah. and just in general and just, you know, trying to bring on more guest speakers and having mm-hmm. a whole reference guide for you guys this year and just um, more, I guess references would just be the great thing, but blog posts and things that just go into it even more depth. So if you're curious, you can look into it even more. More resources that like, it's not just you listening to us on a podcast yeah. or you watching us on YouTube. It is here's the information we learned. Here's where we got it from. Here's the sources. Here's Mm -hmm. like, 
you know, here's a multiple sources of like the information we're sharing. And then now you need to go look at it too. Like if, if it's something before you repeat it, read it is what I always say. Like before you're good. Yeah. And man, there's another shirt idea. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I can see it. I can see it now. Yeah. Um, but like just being more, um, informative to our fellow ladies who are, cause like it, it could be that you want to have a kid in five years or maybe that like mm-hmm. you, you maybe necessarily don't want to have a kid, but you have been on birth control for 10 years and you can tell it's affected your body over the last 10 years. And it's like, yeah. how do you get out of it? <laughs> cause, mm-hmm. or did you even know that you had the option to not take birth control that it's, that it's not, yes, it's normal to society, mm-hmm. but like, it is not normal for your body. It is not mm-hmm. good for your body. It is um, just a, like an alternative thought for you yes. in a series type of way. Yeah. Yeah. And then to always like pair it with offering the aspect of hope if you've been here before. Right. So we're going to pair like what's the best way, like mm-hmm. gold standard. You're just getting out. You're just starting with this. Yeah. What are things that we have found or you know, um, bringing in people who are a little bit better at hormone health, um, for women specifically. And then what do you do if your child did experience this or you did have Pitocin during delivery? What can we do? What could it, how could it affect your child? What can you do now? Because the best place to start is today. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're excited. The, what, I mean, what's the saying? It's, I always push her. I should look it up. The tree like, one? It's the tree one. It's yeah. like, when's the best time to plant a tree? It was like 20, 25 years ago. When's the second time? Second best time is today. And so none of this is ever rooted in like, you know, uh, trying to cause anxiety about like the toxins in the world or the things we eat. Because those things aren't going to change. It's about how to um, advocate for your family, advocate for yourself. Because nobody loves you like you love you and nobody loves your kids like you love your kids. And it's more of, I I don't love the word empower, but like, it's like giving you the strength that has kind of been stripped away from the medical system and just really the system in in general as a whole of like, you are responsible for you. Um, you have bodily autonomy to the things and like just empowering you with the information that, you know, gets me excited about like with birth, like, yeah, so many people telling me their stories about their birth and it was horrific. And you just, you know, don't even make a birth plan because it's going to go out the window. And I'm like, (laughs) okay, for starters, like, I'm sad for you. Like, I'm, I'm sad that's what you thought and that, like, but I can pretty much guess exactly what happened and I can always guess the cascade of interventions that happened from, oh, there's this, your baby looks too big. And it's like, well, sonograms are like 50% accurate on weight within two pounds. So like, it could be mm-hmm. six pounds, it could be eight pounds, it could, it could be four, like, there, it is just not accurate. And so many, there's so many, things that happen after that or whatever happens yeah. where it just sends in this cascade of interventions. And it's like, well, that's why you didn't get the birth you wanted because you didn't have a provider who advocated for you in the proper way. Mm-hmm. They just w- did not practice evidence-based, evidence-based birth. So mm-hmm. yeah, we're just here to share all the things. Yeah. yeah. I love birth. <laughs> I mean, I haven't done it yet, <laughs> but I can't wait. I can't wait to give birth. I'm excited. Which is awesome. That was not my experience. So we get to like throw, you know, the like, oh, my kid's almost 12. We did it totally wrong. No, and but you did the, you did the best yeah, you had well, with the knowledge you had yeah. at the time. Like if I had a kid 12 years ago, like I would have yeah, been really young. How old would I have been? <laughs> yeah, I'm too young. Mm-hmm. 16. Is that right, math? I'm 28. Yeah. No. I don't know. My, my brain's tired. <laughs> But <laughs> quick math. But that's the thing is like there's there's grace in all of us. Absolutely. Like there's yeah. loads of stuff I've done that I'm like, why did I do that? Why did I take that? Why did mm-hmm. I let them inject me with that? Like that was such a bad idea. Um, but there's always grace. And you learn and you just do better tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Next, do the next right thing. Thanks for being here with us today. We would love to connect with you over on Instagram at under the sun underscore podcast. Please help us out by subscribing on YouTube, leaving a review on Spotify or Apple podcast. We'll see you next time. Please remember this information is made available to you for informational and educational purposes only. This is in no way a substitute for medical advice.